Hello and welcome, my fellow Robo Sapiens, to the channel. I am your host, Magic Jellybean, and today's topic of discussion is going to be Robocraft. More specifically, in the vein of Robocraft, we're going to be discussing exactly how this game can turn itself around. Thanks for tuning in. Before we start the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell if you want to get notified of new content, and again, just thanks for tuning in. So, before I get this video started, I can I will say this: the most important thing in a game, actually in every game, generally speaking are really two things, foundation and never compromising on that foundation. Keep in mind, I am just one person, I'm not the developer, I'm not free jam, but I am someone with an opinion and a good intent towards this game, and that's exactly what this game needs, is more support. Um, so please don't take this video, uh, at, you know, specifically for what it is, take it with a grain of salt and definitely input your ideas in the comments below. To get started, I'm going to talk about three things that I believe are three key pillars for this game that need to be re-established because they have been corrupted. First is the foundation. By definition, founda foundation is the basic or groundwork of anything, according to dictionary.com. Uh, otherwise stated, it is also the act of founding, setting up, or establishing. So foundation is actually an establishment, which is what every game needs, right? You don't just make a game and then not have a foundation, right? You don't make Resident Evil 6 without thinking about, you know, what the core gameplay is going to be. Uh, for example, a wooden treehouse built on steel beams deeply rooted in the ground will not move in a landslide, but even the strongest of Earth's metals will fall if you build it on sand. It's okay to add extra amenities to a game, but what's not okay is when those amenities or additional features do corrupt the foundation. As long as the foundation isn't compromised in structure, anything you put on top of it has less chance of falling. Keep in mind, the higher you want to build, the deeper the foundation needs to be. So when you add extra content, make sure that the foundation foundation is strengthened. As a developer, I will tell you this and only this. Decide what your foundation is and stick to it. Again, I could be wrong here, but here's what I believe is the foundation of what Robocraft is and will sustain it. Creative building, expansive maps with massive teams, or in other words, large-scale warfare, and creative building. And the progression system, otherwise known as the tech tree. So here's a great example to kind of help establish what I mean by foundation. Look at the cover of Rainbow Six Siege, right? What do you see? You see a group of small tactical combat, and that's really what the game is. It's tactical combat with specialized units, almost like heroes with uh, like an Overwatch kind of hero-esque playstyle. Uh, but this is exactly what the cover depicts. Rainbow Six Siege is a successful game. Yeah, it had a terrible, you know, it had a pretty terrible start. But as you can see, how you start doesn't really matter. It matters how you finish. Rags to riches is not a fantasy. It's real. So obviously what you advertise is important. Let's go ahead and look at another game, right? Battlefield. advertised as a massive large-scale game. The trailer shows massive actions. Planes, tank, infantry, anti-air, you name it. Uh, theoretically, for example, if all battlefields were advertised in this way, imagine if a battle game was teased in the battlefield fashion, but then delivered Rainbow Six scaled gameplay with only six to eight, you know, team players. Players on a team, excuse me. Players would really be disappointed because their expectations were subverted. And I will get more into this topic, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to continue. So back to Foundation, the cover of Robocraft.
it's very artsy you see a lot of builds you see multiple robots there's they're really showing you know a lot of robots in one battle but what do we get we get five versus five and no megabots small maps and fewer players are actually able to fulfill multiple roles which means gameplay is more tactical and less team based and i know that sounds weird but i'll explain Battlefields wouldn't be as fun if the medics could also supply ammo and use sniper rifles. This is essentially what Robot Craft is. This game's foundation is misadvertised. I'll show you what I mean, but as I said, I'm going to continue on this point later. As far as creative building, um, the factory, even though this is definitely a hot topic and has a lot of pros and cons, is another thing that really compromises on what the foundation of the game is, which is creative building. And on one end, for example, factory allows you to upload robots, so if you ever want to create a new robot, but you had to delete old ones, like me, I like to make a lot of robots, but I don't really have the garage capacity yet, I only have 11 garages with 2000 CPU, you can always go and find that robot. So you can upload it to the CRF and then you can basically delete the robot and then if you ever want to use it again you can come download it again also factory is really great for sharing bots. how do I know because I made spider-man and instead of having you know people watch a three-hour YouTube video of how I built it which I haven't put out yet but I will they can simply just buy the bot um, so I can simply upload that to the factory and then it's all you know it's all done good give them a factory ID and you're all good to go on the other hand creative building foundation is now compromised again I'm gonna get into that later the last thing is the large or large-ish scale warfare. Uh, need I say more? Five versus five megabots have been kicked out. Yeah, they're in custom games, but that's not the same as actually introducing them in public matches. And, again, smaller maps in general. Yeah, you might experience a little slightly more queue times, you know, because players might be spending a little more time in the garage. Uh, but the truth is, unless, if they're not like me, they can build, you know, they can build a good two to three robots in two three hours and then you can use that you know for a whopping seven days um so it's not really going to affect you times that much i've seen that thrown around a lot in forums um, that's not really the case um <laughs> yeah continuing and one more thing the queue time is not unless you know free jam believes this queue times are not the foundation of every game that's just something that games have to deal with in general um so making any changes for the queue time is especially when it compromises the foundation, when it compromises the foundation, is the worst thing you can do. On to the next topic. The next major key component, which we just discussed, was large-scale warfare. So how do you implement large-scale warfare? It really doesn't matter too much, you know, the intricacies that you use, as long as they don't, you know, damage the foundation. Here's an example. Right now, robots have the tools to have large-scale warfare. It does not matter that we have 5v5, we actually have the tools here. We have any air weapons, we have lock-on missiles, lasers, snipers, plasma bombers, we got everything. But you know what we don't have? We don't have the match size to accommodate that diversity. Even you know with the three-piece setup for weapons and modules, it's not enough to allow players to become a better all-in-one machine. The concept of the universal soldier in the case of Robocraft is kind of flawed. Uh, because if you don't believe me, look at Battlefield 3 Medic Class, right? At one point in time, especially when that you know that player that game had a really high active player race because the game just came out, it was really broken. They were they were really so good. So what makes Battlefield games greater in terms of what was released later is the fact that there's class diversity and that all the tools are available on the on the battlefield were separated to and assigned to different classes. So in Robocraft's case, you can't really properly allocate your in-game tools with a 5v5 match. 5 versus 5 is not large scale scale warfare. And again, I understand the argument of queue times, but believe me, I don't mind waiting an extra 30 seconds between matches in, or in order to get a decent 8v8 going on or a megabot match. Again, large matches are the foundation, not queue times. So just in queue times, even if due to shortage of players, destroys a, you know if that destroys the foundation, then what good is it? So no matter what you build on top of this foundation, it's wobbly ground because now it's based off of queue time, right? So again, it's it's the difference between building in stone and building in sand. If we're building this game off of cute times, it's gonna fall no matter how great you know all these any air lock on missiles, all these extra air minis are. It doesn't matter. Um, so if you don't think this is true, just just look at your player base. And this is not you know a stab in the back. I'm just saying, look at the facts. I do have some you know really great ideas. I'm not just sitting here spouting off nonsense for no reason. I have some great ideas to help rebuild the foundation of the game, but now is not the time. This is going to be discussed in the second half of the video, so just stick around. It's going to be part of the second segment. 
And just while I'm in that vein, let's talk about the advertising, right? When RoboCraft, right, when you guys release trailers, it always shows really hyped up gameplay and large scale gameplay. For example, you can look at this poster of Megabots, right? Not saying RoboCraft should be 64 man battles, nudge nudge. But you should definitely make your game more proportionally massive as you advertise it. In Battlefield games, for example, if you have a 12-man team, so 12 versus 12, and compare that to 32-man matches, um, it's proportionally close to when you have a 5 versus 5 in Robocraft versus 13 versus 13. Um, so going on numbers alone, this means that Robocraft needs to increase their player base by 2.6 times to provide the authentic experience that you're advertising, right? Because Battlefield does it best. They have large-scale warfare, so that's a good thing to compare it to. So, you know, for now, you can raise player base to 7.7, .7. that would suffice. It's not too drastic of a change, and so it's not really going to affect the game as it is too much. And if look, if the player base responds positively, then guess what? You know you're headed in the right direction, so what you can do is you can increase or improve that player count. You can move on to 8 versus 8, and eventually somewhere between that good, you know, gold spot, that sweet spot, between 10 and 13 player teams including megabots the reason why this is a great sweet spot by the way is because if you had any less specifically in a mega match it, the mega matches would be too heavily decided on you know whose megabot gets destroyed first so having more players uh, and means that you know if one team for example has only the megabot left and another team only has all the normal units left and they lost their megabot you kind of stand in equal ground and the megabot doesn't just stomp them completely and now moving on to the second pillar of this game is after foundation comes compromise right so here's a quick little i guess analogy if you will when a man and a woman becomes husband and wife they find themselves in positions to have to compromise meaning we both get what we want but at the same time we don't we don't get to the fullest extent of what we want we get what's more or less called a piece of the pie no pun intended for dominoes there and this is definitely not sponsored by dominoes this ties into what i was saying about the foundation at the end of the day free jam this is your game but you can't avoid your player base. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. And if you're not feeding your cows, how are you going to eat? As developers, yeah, you, yeah, you're entitled to make your own game. But if you don't compromise on what players want, you'll be making that game by yourself. And you'll be playing it by yourself. Um, so here's a good example, because I really love examples. I'm aware that loads of people have been asking for old 2014 slash 2015 Robocraft back. If you don't believe me, go look at all the forums. Um, it's pretty apparent that a lot of people, you know, they're crying out for this game. But the truth is, um, some people don't want that game. Um, I personally, for example, even though I, I kind of want 2014 back, there's some aspects I actually like about what you guys have done in terms of revising combat. I do believe that the five part or the five item robot, the five slot, was a little too much. Reducing it to three is actually perfect. I think two might be better, but that might need some testing. This pleases those who love the old system of one weapon, and this also pleases people like me who like having two to three slots. Not so I can really have more weapons, but because I can run more modules. So effectively, most people will still run one weapon, and they'll still have room for a module without becoming that all-in-one universal death machine that nobody wants in this game. Alternatively, you could just limit, for example, weapon type to just two and still have three slots, so players are forced to use either a module or just not take advantage of the third slot, but they only can use two weapons. Limiting weapon type to one would mean more module spam, which can or can't be fun. Uh, it just depends. Again, you know, just test these and find the best compromises. Maybe the best thing to do is to limit it to one and, you know, have two extra slots for models or limit it to two or maybe give them all three and have people that run one weapon, for example, with better modules gives them a better niche role. And here's a really nice example, right? If I have a robot and I build it out in my factory, it doesn't matter how much CPU it is. If I have lasers on it and then I have rails and I have nanos, I don't have modules. So this is a universal bot build. But I am not good at anything. I'm a jack of all trades, right? But if I build a robot specifically for healing with support modules, with modules that support it, like shield and then, you know, maybe the um, jump drive, the one that allows you to escape or, you know, moving closer to a teammate, then I become a better healer, even though I am not very diverse in my capability. Same can be said for rails and lasers. If so, if I have a three weapon robot and I go against somebody that has rails, for example, if I'm using my rails against his rails, I'm going to lose, right? Because his bot is better equipped to fight me specifically. He can put up a shield, he can run away, he can throw an EMP. Um, so, you know, that's just what I mean by, you know, creating balance between modules and, you know, weapon slots. 
So to kind of you know wrap up the concept of compromise, basically what it boils down to is that the foundation of this game, which again is building robots for large scale battles, is not compromise. It's not everybody's going to get what they want, but everybody gets a piece of the pie. And at its roots, this game needs to focus on its foundation and never stray from it. The foundation of this game is literally player creativity used to build robots for large scale battles. I mean, is that what else do you build your robots for? You don't build them just to have them sit on the showroom floor. Um, so again, if queue time is increased, you know, um, because we move player matches back to seven to eight per team, that doesn't matter. Reducing player count per, you know, just for the sake of queue times, again, just destroys this foundation. Queue time is not the foundation of the game. Large scale warfare is another thing. In my personal opinion, as I was saying earlier, you know, as as much as I kind of like factory, just you know, it it really doesn't have a place in this game you know a factory for a crafting game that that's just that's <laughs> that's just contradictory right there and even you know even if it's only art bots it's just this still kind of messes with the foundation of the game because if you really want to build an art bot it's not that serious just go to youtube and copy it um so yeah queue tombs queue times are going to be a little longer um people spending a little more time in their garages building on this build but that's okay like i said i spend half my time in the garage anyway when i'm signed into robocraft i play a robot for about five matches even if it's a really really nice robot i'll probably be building another one for the next hour and destroying that robot just because i like trying out different stuff like i was saying before so there's a lot of possibilities and i enjoy taking the time to seek those possibilities so again the important thing to take away here is just to never compromise you know on what the game what the core gameplay experiences because that's what a foundation is it is the core experience that you will have regardless of what you add in the game that's what that's what the core that's what a core game experience means so free jam you have to go back to the foundation um, if you know if r6 if rainbow six siege i'm sorry can make a comeback then you definitely can the list goes on and on you know but for the sake of this video i'm just i'm just keeping it short here so unless you apply the concept of, you know foundational building and not compromising on that foundation, but compromising, you know, on the amenities that we have with players and the intricacies of the gameplay outside of, you know, the core of the game, then nothing else I say really matters. And to wrap this video up, the last segment here is what we can do as players. And this is probably one of the biggest pillars of all three. Um, stop flaming the game. Uh, keep in mind, this is not just your game. At the end of the day, you know, developers and their employers, they're actually real people. They have deadlines, they have money to make. When you're constantly talking down about a game or flaming the developers, this can cause people to get discouraged. We're not all robots, even though you know we are playing Robocraft. This is our game, but it's Free Cham's intellectual property. And they do have the responsibility, yes, to please you as a player, otherwise they wouldn't make money. But at the end of the day, think about it like this. You have what you say. If you're always rambly about how the game's dead, why are you surprised that the game is dying? The key to reviving a game is to support it. No, I'm not happy with every decision Free Jam has made, uh, but at the end of the day, as long as the core gameplay is there, which is again large scale warfare, that I can continue to enjoy the game because every single match, no matter what happens, I'll keep getting that core experience. So yes, maybe I don't like Seekers, or maybe I do. It doesn't matter because I still get to build and have those large scale encounters. So my, like I said, the basic experience doesn't change here. So at the end of the day, you just have to support the developers. It's one thing to cry out for change. It's another thing to start throwing knives in their back. You can petition for change peacefully without being aggressive or taking on to violent speech, like how I'm doing right now or how people do on the Free Jam forum, right? So for example, loot boxes were added into the game. It was a nightmare, right? It's okay to riot against it, but when you start thrashing the developers and their game in order to better the game, you're actually contradicting yourself. If you want a better game, then don't speak against a better game. You want a better game, but your mouth speaks the opposite. So you have to, like I said, you have what you say. We may not get exactly what we want, but in the end, if done in good fashion and in decent order, we can certainly create the game that we all want. And on that note, Free Jam, I do hope that you consider seriously what I have said. I appreciate a good game when I play one, and you certainly have a hidden gem on your hand. I'll say that much. But I can't say that I support you in all you know in all your decisions concerning how you've altered the foundation or what I believe to be the foundation of the game. Uh, for players, just remember this much: the best thing you can do is support the developers. It's not impossible to support the game and critique it. It's called constructive criticism. With that being said, thanks for sticking to the end, if you did. I got a new video editor, by the way, um, so expect more uploads. Um, my other editor was really buggy, uh, and I just never felt like uploading stuff. It would have taken way too long to record this video, for example. This probably would have taken 
about five hours. Uh, so with that being said, love you all. Grace and peace to all that here. And I am your host, the Magic Jellybean. Bye.